Does everyone have a packet? Did everyone get a packet? Does everyone have one with them today? Uh, this is a very important day. This is when you start to learn about democracy and you start to learn about how representative government works. That means if you're an elected official, as I hope many of you will be one day, you have to represent the people who elected you and what they want done. It's called representative democracy. So everybody gets to vote, but only some people get to make that decision up here. So today you get a chance to work on the same issues that many of us on city council are making, working on. We'll be right beside you. We'll have chairs right beside you. We'll help you get through it. But it's your chance to, to run the city, and we want you to do that. I said, I said it the other day, I'll say it again. Latin citizens are underrepresented. We need you to register to vote. We need you to vote, because that's the way you get your voice heard. And that's very, very important for your life, for your children as you become adults, for your jobs, and for government. So we want you to be involved, and this is your first chance today. Who, uh, who remembers what happens up here at the dais? What happens up here? Your That's right. You get to make your opinions known. For those of you who aren't up here at that, at that particular time, you're the citizens then, and what do you get to do? As citizens. The sun. The sun? What else? Your opinion. That's right. Today we have several people with us who are uh, uh, staff members, and they're going to help us get through the day. Uh, my name's Carl Schwing. I'm the city manager for the city of Bonita Springs. I'm the chief executive officer and my responsibility is to run the city day to day um, at the direction of the mayor and the city council members. And the staff members and some of our executive staff are here today um, are responsible for me to make sure, responsible to me to make sure certain things happen as we serve our residents. So in a nutshell, that's what I do. But I report directly to the mayor and council. I'm hired by them as is the city attorney. The, uh, the way the city's organized is the people who are elected make decisions on policy and strategy, the things that are sort of decide how the big city is, is supposed to look and run. M Mr. Schwing is responsible then for making all that happen. So he has all the responsibilities for all the people who work in the city, with the exception of the city attorney, and that's, that's his job. Um, I am the director of development services. So basically, uh, one of the key factors of what I do is I help businesses navigate through their permitting processes. So for example, if you want to open up a restaurant or a store, there's permits that you have to have to be able to do that. You might have to construct a new sink in your kitchen. Um, you might have to uh, plug in a new gas grill, which means the fire department needs to come and inspect it. So I help businesses work through that process. I also work with the local chamber of commerce and the city is a partner in the Benita Springs Estero Economic Development Council. Um, and we also work through different grant programs, um, facade renovations and landscaping renovations that we can help businesses spruce up and beautify their, their business so they can. I'm Matt Feeney, I'm the city's public works director. Uh, I'm responsible for most of the construction projects that you see throughout the city on our roadways uh, as well as our landscaping. Uh, and, and then mess downtown. And the big mess downtown, <laughs> uh, you have me to blame. Uh, but no, basically maintain the city's roadways, uh, in infrastructure with drainage, and then uh, construct environmental projects as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Thank you. Great. I am Frank Cassidy, Director of Neighborhood Services, which oversees the uh, health, safety, and welfare of your community at your neighborhood levels. So we work very closely with uh, Sheriff's Department, Animal Services, Fire Department to enforce uh, ordinances codes and provisions of what the city uh, it wants to be and uh, how, how the aesthetics as well as the quality of life issues are that uh, the city wants to try to preserve. I've been an three attorney, minutes. Three, minutes. three minutes or less. Uh, I've been an attorney for over 25 years. Uh, to be an attorney you have to go uh, first to college and then afterwards to law school so that's three years after you get your bachelor's degree and I specialize in city county local government and it's an area of practice. Prior to that, I was a prosecutor, which meant I put people in jail, which was kind of a fun job in a sick way. Uh, <laughs> um, but what I do is I make sure um, I, I review contracts for the city, I write laws, so council will get an idea and they want to do stuff, and I help them process it uh, so it can be done. And then I also remind city council that they need to follow certain state or federal laws and even city laws.
Hi, good morning. My name is Ann Wright. I'm the finance director and our department's responsible for accounting for all the, the income that comes into the city and all of the disbursements that go from the city. So we prepare all the checks that get dispersed to pay invoices and, and um, it's a very important job. But one of the most important jobs that we do in coordination with the council is we compile all the information for the annual budget. And that is something that is presented to council. And of course, those are some tough decisions sometimes. And some of you may be familiar with uh, some of the meetings where they're uh, discussing the budget. So that information is presented to council, but it is a document that's approved by city council. Uh, we compile it, we make recommendations, and the city votes on it. And then we monitor to make sure that we stay in compliance with that budget throughout the year. We also uh, have an annual audit of our financial statements, so an external accounting firm comes in and audits to make sure that we've done our jobs properly and we produce a document called a, a comprehensive annual financial report. Good morning, I'm the city clerk, Debbie Philippeck. My office is the keeper of the city seal. We prepare the legal notices that are in the newspapers. Uh, we fulfill public records requests if somebody calls in and they need information on documents, ordinances, or plans, they call my office. And I prepare uh, we coordinate with the city, with the Lee County Supervisor of Elections Office on city elections. My name is Ellen Nichols. I'm the program director for New Horizons. My husband and I founded this organization in 2002, and we're so honored to be here and meet all of you and have our young people share in this experience. It's part of what a New Horizon is. It's taking young people that may not have the opportunity to have an experience like this and make that connection so that they are able to have a new horizon in their own life. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laura Dela Cruz and I work at the Super Teens Club, more on the ground, closely with the students, you know, helping them every day with their homework and just any other issues they might encounter. And I'm Jan Chance. I'm the Lee County uh, Coordinator for New Horizons, so I help oversee all of our uh, various locations in Lee County, and I get to work with these guys and do the fun things with them as well. So. And you know what? You, I say the same thing when I see you. You are our future leaders. Take an interest. Learn. <coughs> speak up. If you see something wrong, you know there's a saying. If you see something, say something. Don't wait till after the fact where they say, you know, I thought something was kind of funny there, but I didn't want to get involved. Get involved. You are our leaders, and we're so glad to see you here. Thanks. All right, let's go. Ms. Wright, would you like to take these four with you? Good morning. This is the first time we've done the New Horizons kids with Government Day. They are very interested, anxious, they all look wonderful. They're taking a tour right now and soon they're going to be doing the Mock City Council meeting. It's so important for this group because typically they're a little disenfranchised, not voting. We want them to understand democracy and how representative democracy works. We're very, very pleased to have them here today. You heard Dr. McIntosh talking about that sense of community and that's what this is all about. So what our department does is we work very closely with all kinds of resources through the city because we deal with government light. The mission piece we have done and what, it, what we did it for is to show the history of Benita. So can you recognize spots within there you can see there? If you look right over there, you'll see that's a replica of our mural. So this is Arlene Hunter's office. She is the lady you met downstairs who is the Director of Development Services, yeah, um, helps with permitting of businesses and those kinds of things. And she also is the incoming Assistant City Manager. She'll be Assistant City Manager in a couple of months when John leaves, okay? I work with the contractors and the engineers that uh, design the projects to make sure that everything is being built in accordance with the documents and the plan set. She and Jennifer Sadler are the front lines for the Public Works Department. So you, you met uh, Karen downstairs. Folks come in with us for driveway permits, to get paid with invoices, contractors that work for us. These guys handle that. If, if there's a complaint or a request for service that lies in the realm of the, the, the things that we're responsible for with this department, 
they take in that call and you can see uh, really what's up on Jennifer's screen is a, a work order system. They will develop a request for, for one of our field inspectors to go out and look and we'll assess the situation and, and determine whether there's something that we can do or whether someone else needs to, to help us with it. City Hall, okay, here's our downtown area, okay, and here's where all the construction's going on, right here, right now. I-75, and then you have all of the gated communities that run up and down 41 as well as Bonita Beach Road out to the east. New Horizons is an after-school tutoring and mentoring program for at-risk children. Our mission is to empower at-risk youth to reach their full potential through tutoring, mentoring, and faith. Our children come to us five days a week after school in seven different locations. They receive tutoring from volunteers from the community, mentoring, um, and they have opportunities like this to come to city council and see what's going on in the city and how they can become involved, involved as adults and potential career opportunities for them. Our objective is to help children graduate from high school with a plan for the future so that they can become productive members of our community. We love having people from the community become volunteers because you help make the connection between our young people, our youth and our community and what's happening in the world. Um, and all you have to do is complete a volunteer application and choose a location and get started. Typically our volunteers come one day a week for an hour and a half, but we also have committees and other ways that um, people can get involved at all different levels and aspects of New Horizons. Having Steve McIntosh present this opportunity to bring our students for a government day was an incredible way for us to introduce our young people to what's happening right here in the city of Bonita, how government works at the most basic local level, and hopefully give them the and inspire them to become part of um, our government, perhaps run for an office, and make a difference right here in Bonita Springs. And remember, you're on TV. So you gotta, you gotta uh, sit up straight, look at the camera, make sure that you're poised, and then you go into the issues. And the mayor will say, uh, city attorney, read the, uh, read the green sheet. And city attorney will read the green sheet. Now, okay, you'll see Ms. Vance up here, Mr. Schwing, and, oh no, Mr. Schwing, are you gonna be here? Or is it? Okay, and Ms. Hunter will be up here, yeah. and Ms. Wright. So those are the people when there's a question about how much money it costs, or is it legal, or is there something we should do with staff to get this done, you'll ask this, the, the mayor to ask the city staff how to handle that. So don't hesitate to ask the staff members. Okay, everybody ready? Okay, first issue is, uh, is issue number one with the mayor is Maria. And District 1 is Isabel, District 2, Naele, District 3, Jalen, Ford, Litzy, Lou, uh, Lewis is 5, Vanessa is 6. City Manager, please. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Sam Baker. 
Uh, I've lived in Bonita Springs and voted in Bonita Springs for 35 years. And I have to tell you that the city is as trashy as I've ever seen it. And I think it is disgusting and a disgrace. And I think that the mayor and city council need to get on this issue because I'm not proud to live in Bonita Springs anymore because of all the trash that you allow spewed all over the streets and all over our parks. I try to help, I try to help, but I'm, I'm handicapped and I can only pick up one bag at a time. So please do something about this. Get your staff working, please. Thank you. Thank you, I'm so happy you're letting me talk today. My name is Oscar and the last speaker, he really is against me. He's such a grouch because he keeps thinking that I pollute because when I finish blowing my nose, I just have to get rid of my stuff because I care, you know, putting that garbage cans out. So, I mean, the problem isn't the garbage out there. The problem is that people should just let things decompose when they need to decompose and just leave things as is. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Editor. Um, I think the... Your name, Blue? My name is Editor. And I think the streets are dirty because there's not enough garbage cans. I think you should put up more garbage cans in every corner. I think you should put your workers to more work hours because they're not doing their job right. And I think because the city's been polluted and that's what I gotta say. Thank you. Any other public comment? City council discussion? I believe that some streets are more polluted than others and that there should be more trash cans in the streets that are more polluted than the streets that are Thank you. District 1? Um, I do agree with the, the pollution in cleanup and I, I proclaim some more cleanup because we shouldn't be known as a city that's known for trash. Bonita is also the definition of Spanish, beautiful. We shouldn't be known as the opposite of that. So I think we should impose some new things, put some rules, and more fines if we do find someone for trashing, or also any more workers in there. I know it's going to cost a lot of money, but we should be known for something not like that. We have a city cleanup on January 7th. February 27th. Do we also partner? To keep we have the beautiful. Or we partner with we can. We can. Is there a second to the motion? And the motion is to reach out outwards to create an outreach and education program. Is there any further discussion? Roll call. District two. Aye. District three. Aye. Mayor. Aye. District four. Aye. District five. Aye. District six. Aye. District one. Aye. Motion passes. Right. Good job. <laughs> before, before we switch, before we switch, what we learn here? What we learn? What? Exactly right. Don't be afraid. This you're you're up here because people elected you to say what's on your mind. My name is Lewis. Um, I have an opinion. Uh, you know, water is important. Uh, it keeps our body um, dehydrated and, you know, it keeps us working and it gives us energy. So I think uh, installing uh, water fountains and having something to drink in the park once you're working out or running around with your kids, it's an important part for the park. So. Um, I just want to let you know that uh, I am not in favor of additional uh, water fountains or swing sets in our parks. Um, I've been retired now for 15 years. Uh, when I was young, um, 
I played in the streets. Um, that's what I think they ought to do now. Um, I think spending money on additional swing sets and, and water fountains uh, is just a waste of the taxpayers' dollars. Why don't you give us a tax break instead? Cut the taxes. Don't build more swing sets. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome. Hello, my name is my name's George Mason, and and I, I don't agree with the swings. I feel like, again, with one of the previous speakers away from where I live, Kids are destructive, and they don't know how to handle things. But water fountains, I agree. We need to keep hydrated, but again, swings keep them away from the people, anyone that can get hurt, because kids are dangerous. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Liability is hurting the community. My name is Ellen. And I wanted to speak about the, my concern about the city spending more money on swings and water fountains rather than spending money on more important issues like our roads or even improvements in education. Um, I think it's a waste of money to give kids more swings. We have plenty. Let the parents take their kids somewhere else or just play with them. The other thing is, is that if we put more swings in, as one other citizen mentioned, they are dangerous. And I do not think that the children are supervised sufficiently at these parks. So to, it would increase the danger to other people that are around and to the children themselves, more broken bones, more expense, more cost to the community and our health system. Um, so why are we even discussing this? It's a waste of our time and our money. Um, and I would say um, to the mayor, and please share this with all of your council members and those here, that we should not spend our money on swings or water pumps. Thank you. Thank you. To order. Oh, audience, will you please sit down? <laughs> My name is Francisco. Um, I think we should have swings and water fountains, but maybe not at the park specifically, but maybe at schools. In recent studies, they've shown that kids uh, improve better in their education, as one of the spe previous speakers had mentioned. And if we add more swings and water fountains, then um, kids can have better recess times, which have extended recess times too. And they can improve their education skills and let, um, let them burn off some energy. So instead of building parks and in specific areas, we should build swings and water fountains at schools instead. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any ideas? We can invite New Horizon. I think that they should advertise it on TV. I have a child that goes to New Horizons and she said that she enjoyed it very much and she's made many friends there, so I'm, it would be great if you could advertise it on TV and stuff. Welcome. Um, hi, I'm Lucy Hartfilia. And um, I would like to say that um, I think that a good way to brand New Horizons is by making a video or music video. And that will be a fun idea and it would show um, parents and kids how fun and how beneficial it might be to, um, to join New Horizons. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, my name is Edgar, and I think we should give out flyers to every school so they know that to spread the like horizon and to get more students to come because it was able to help me too to pick up my grades and it's they have like transportation to your house so you won't have to worry about that either. Um, also, they should also make um, a video and show it to every school so they could bring more students in so they could help them with the grade as well. And yeah. Thank you. How much would that cost if we would distribute flyers? 
Welcome. My name is Isabel Rayo. Um, I was a student of New Horizons when I was little. I am now a 30 year old. Um, I want to brand New Horizons because, like, with the, with the commercials, let it be known around the world because everyone deserves to hear about New Horizons because it's a great benefit for kids who are having problems with schools. I was had a problem, but now I don't. I'm, I had I graduated with honors and I was gifted too. And this would be a great benefit, so we should put flyers, commercials, and cards around the world to so let everyone know about it, because it's a great benefit to students, because the city's pretty much, students are the new generation, and they're gonna be the leaders one day, and they will be standing right there where you guys are at, and they're gonna say how they succeeded with New Horizons. Welcome. Hi, my name is Gilberto. Um, I want New Horizons brand because you know, it helps the new, like the kids with their grades so they can get it up even if they're failing they can bring to like higher grade. And I want to brand like with ads like before like you watch a video, like you put an advertisement. And that's it. Thank you. Welcome. My name is Lewis. Um, I want uh, New Horizons to brand because uh, it gives you opportunities to a future and gives you better hope on careers that you won't think you're possible to get to. But with that help of New Horizons, you you well, not only do you have the opportunity to go to it, but you can be a that you accomplish it and achieve your goals. Thank you. My name is Francisco. I would like to um, clarify something with the what's it's asking. Um, is it already being branded, or is it like not being branded, and how we can how it can be branded? How we can brand and spread the word and make it more so it's already branded. Yeah. Hello, my name is Maria. I was in New Horizons for 13 years. I received a scholarship for four years and I'm now pursuing my dream to become a nurse practitioner. I think the best way to brand New Horizons is to use the students that are in it and the students who have graduated from it. Have them go to the schools, talk to their peers, um, make presentations, show how this has affected their lives and bring their friends to it. We could have days where um, they can maybe bring a friend to the program so the friends can learn about it, bring the parents to see what's going on in the programs, and um, just reach out more to the schools and to make sure the schools know what we're doing in the program so that they can inform the parents about the program. Thank you. Any other public comment? <laughs> It would depend on what type of flyer or brochure you want to create. In your situation, I would recommend going with the lowest cost option where the students could help design the flyers and you could print it in-house so the cost would be minimal. that ever since the county built the first sidewalk, or for, I'm sorry, the first bike path on the beach, it's been used by pedestrians instead of bikers. And what happens is I can't ride my bike because of these pedestrians. You can't keep doing it in a lot of pedestrians. I want you, if you do put more bike paths, you've got to make it very clear to them that they cannot use that. Because I had somebody with a stroller and I told them they cannot have a stroll around the bike path, and they still used it. The indignity of it all. Thank you. It happened to me, for real. Good morning, Mr. Mayor, council members. Uh, my name is Matt Feeney. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of Florida. Um, I think the issue uh, before you today uh, is uh, very difficult. The problem that you have is there's only so much room on the streets 
um, beyond the paved portion of the street where you can actually construct um, sidewalks um, or bike lanes. And so I'm just here to constructively suggest a few things. Number one, I don't think the city can uh, afford, practically speaking, placing uh, additional wider sidewalks and bike lanes on every street in the city. So my suggestion to you would be take the major streets first, take your um, arterial roads first, make sure that they're covered, deal with that price, and then prioritize your collector streets and then get down to your residential streets. I can guarantee you that this is a project that's going to have to be compartmentalized, that you're going to need to take the most important streets, the most highly traveled streets first, and then work backwards from there. The budget, you will not, it's gonna blow your minds how expensive this is gonna be. For the entire, you're talking millions and millions and millions of dollars to do it citywide. Take the most important streets first, work backwards. If you need to bond money and borrow money to do this, that might be an opportunity for you. Also, if individuals on uh, individual streets wish to participate and have sidewalks, you might offer a program where they actually kick into the cost to put additional sidewalks and bike lanes on those individual streets as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, morning, council members, mayor. Uh, I'm no, no change. And I want to tell you, I think this is a joke. You know, you talk about bike lanes and making this more pedestrian friendly. You paying attention, Mayor? I'm talking to you. And I want to tell you something. You tore up downtown Bonita, and you expect me to ride my bike down there. And that's a joke. You know, how am I going to do that? And you try to cross the street, you can't get across the street. You put in roundabouts, that would be dangerous. People are going to go the wrong way. And I'm riding my bike, and they get on a roundabout. You know, that's, that's crazy. And somebody's going to get killed, and it's probably going to be your fault for doing this. So I just want to tell you, I think you're stupid. Thank you very much. Morning, um, Hello, my name is Nayeli, and I think that we should not expand the sidewalks and bike lanes because a lot of people get killed and it'll just give cars less room to drive and it'll cause more accidents and a lot of people have already been killed riding bikes and crossing the roads so I just don't think it's a good idea. That's it. Thank you. Come on. Uh, my name is Brenda and I think we should widen sidewalks for the safety of the public and there's room for at least two people just walking it instead of a small room. Thank you. Uh, hi, thank you. My name is Lindsay Lerma, and I have children. I live in the off of um, Silverado, and I have children who walk to school, and they <coughs> definitely need sidewalks. And I agree with the last speaker that they don't have to be super wide, but they have to be wide enough because I don't know if you've noticed how many kids walk from that neighborhood to Benita Middle School. And so they need sidewalks to walk on. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bill Fussell. I, I represent the Bicycle and Pedestrian uh, and Rollerblader Association of America. As a matter of fact, I rode my bicycle down from Tampa. Here. And I want to uh, talk to you about the concept of a road diet. Uh, in a previous speaker that talked about the work that you're doing in Old 41, I think it's wonderful in your downtown, but I want to challenge you. Get the cars completely off the roads. Make Benita a bicycle rollerblade community open only to non-motorized vehicles. Just keep the cars out of Benita. It will help with all kinds of groups. I know you have issues with folks out on the beach that don't want more traffic. Trust me, if we take this monumental step, you will be on CNN. You will be at the head of the community. Thank you. My name is Edgar Ramirez, and I don't think we should build more roads. I mean, sidewalks because people, they should know their neighborhood. They should know where roads don't go 
where not much cars go, I, I think. Like, you should know where you live. You should know what roads are used the most. I think those are the roads you're supposed to go to. I think there should be some sidewalks in certain places, like Bonita Middle, because there could be any, like, kids, they, they're, they're so cramped. They always want to be so, like, together. They, they line up in a straight road. They almost get hit by cars. I think they should also have more um, police out to take care of the kids when they're walking back home because kids cross the road out of nowhere. Because when you're driving out of nowhere, you see someone chasing a soccer ball. Or because they played soccer before, I think they should. They just kick the ball wherever. They, it goes in the road and the kids chase it. And a, a car could hit them. I think you should expand it the sidewalk by Bonita Middle also. And Bonita Beach, there's a lot of cars because it's family time. There's gonna be more than one family going to at the beach at one time. And the, the sidewalks are gonna be full. So I think you should extend that, the sidewalks by Bonita Beach too. Thank you. I am Frances Cassidy. I am the daughter of Frank Cassidy Jr. I am a fifth generation Venetian, and I remember when we had dirt roads where I used to be able to ride my four-wheeler everywhere. And I do not like bicycles. I do not like walkers. They get in the way of my hot rod that I like to ride down the road as fast as I can past the Lee County Sheriff's Office especially. I like to go on my Saturday morning drives. I like to take it up to about 75 miles per hour. And when you uh, pro provide these bike paths and these pedestrian ways and uh, encourage people to come out and walk next to the road, which was made for vehicles, um, we are next to Fort Myers, you know, home of the Model T Ford, Firestone. Bring back our cars, please. And let me have some room for my four-wheeler, too. Thank you. Does it work? So, uh, Hi, my name is Janice Chance. I go by Jan. Um, I want to agree with Mr. Fossil who spoke earlier about getting rid of cars and just making Benita a community of more uh, bicycles and road rates. We eliminate road rage, we eliminate car accidents, and we also eliminate snowbirds coming to our town. Thank you. Council must be more respectful of our staff members. <laughs> Any more discussion? If you're for, uh, yeah, for I agree with some of the speakers that, that we need to widen the sidewalks next to the schools. Cause I myself seen kids just they don't fit down on the sidewalks. You never know when a kid can just get hit, and I don't think we want to have that. You know, a kid dying or getting hit or something. You know, we don't want that. So yeah, that's cool. The family, we got to think about the families. I mean, they think they're safe walking to school, and then next thing you know, they get hit just because of small sidewalks. So I, I feel like we should expand it, get it bigger. And again, about these bike lanes, getting bikers on the sidewalk too, because then again, when you have more accidents, you can hit a biker as you're turning somewhere. And, Again, we don't want to catch a few that way. There's a motion and a second. Is there any more discussion? Cool. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. Mayor? Yes. District 4? Yes. Thank you. Hello, my name is Maria. Um, we need a school here in Bonita Springs because right now, um, this year alone, a lot of kids got turned away from Estero High School because it's reaching its limit. So there, a lot of families are split up. Some kids were forced to have one kid in Estero and one kid in South Fort Myers. And having um, parents here in Bonita Springs, especially in the Hispanic communities where a lot of them um, are afraid to drive out that far 
and this limits the kids from being able to participate in after school activities because there's nobody to go pick them up almost an hour away at South Road Myers. Um, which is why we need a school here so that kids are able to be involved in school and be able to be a part of their school community. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Mayor. My name is Jose, and I agree with most of the speakers that came. And I do agree we should have a high school here because, again, this is a Hispanic community. Most of them want to drive. And I want to south, and I know I couldn't do any after school programs because of the hour it takes to get here. So building a high school here would be really benefit the community because Estero has their high school, Naples has their high school, and it gets filled up quick. So for us to get in, I'll be like, all right, we gotta get all separated. So for us to have our high school would be perfect for the kids. They can feel here, they don't have to travel really long, and they can, if they feel like doing after school activities they can. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Joni Nelson, and I think that we should have a high school, but I don't want it somewhere where there are a lot of people. These are high schoolers we're talking about. They're rebellious, and we don't know what they're going to do. So it should be somewhere secluded where they won't get in too much trouble. Thank you. My name's Naomi, and I think that we should have a high school because in Bonita, because we already have a middle school and an elementary school, why not put a high school in to limit the, how many students go to Estelle? Because what the other speakers have said, their Estelle is reaching its limit, and not a lot of kids can go to high school, to Estelle if they wanted to go to. So we put one in Bonita, you know, it would be easier to go there and less traffic, maybe, I don't know. And I just think it's a really good idea. That's it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Marissa, and I think, I agree that there's um, people that, like, take forever to get to their school. They'll probably be late, but then again, I think it'll take a long time for the school to be built. Like, Take that road out in the whole 41, it's taking forever, and I think building a new school will take more time. City manager, can you read the green sheet? City attorney, can you read the green sheet? Discuss drones and if the city should update its regulations. Thank you. Any public comments? In every other area because who knows if they'll chase you within your house, what will they do with a drone outside of the house? Um, if you'll chase a family member and try to knock them over, what will people do if they have them out in the city parks? So I think they should be regulated um, and really be against the law in all areas. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Brenna, and I think drones should not be flown because of the public's privacy, but also think that they should, but with a license, they could buy it with a purpose. Thank you. speak into the microphone when you come up. Thank you. Yes, my name, for the record, is Antonio Correa, and uh, I understand right now there are regulations by the FAA as to altitudes and all where drones are permitted. However, I do not feel that they should be allowed or permitted to fly over our city parks. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Karen Reyes, and um, I would like to say that um, drones uh, should be allowed to fly in special places and parks so that people could still have fun but like still be like controlled I guess with by when they're using the, dro the drones. Thank you. Thank you. This should one. City Attorney I would like to ask um, if you can clarify what regulations if any 
do we have on these drones at this time? Session 28. Session 28, 21, and 22. Okay. We have regulations for parks and recreation. We have regulations for park and regular uh, recreation. And recreation. That drones can only go. That drones can only go at community park. At community park. So a motion and second. Is there any more discussion? Roll call.